In the last video, we learned about England's attempt at colonization that was unsuccessful. That was Roanoke Island. This video, you're going to learn about Jamestown, the first successful settlement from Great Britain. You're going to learn about different problems that they faced, the important people that were in the settlement, how they interacted with the Native Americans, what a head rate system is, what an indentured servant is, the first Africans in the New World, and then finally about government, which is the House of Burgesses and the voting rights. Make sure you guys are taking good notes. Jamestown, which is located in present-day Virginia, was founded in 1607. From the very beginning, the settlers of Jamestown had to deal with different issues. One issue is the actual area that they located themselves. They were in a marshy area, had a lot of mosquitoes, mosquitoes have malaria, and they didn't have any clean water to actually drink. The second issue that they were dealing with was the fact that they were lazy. They refused to plant crops, they refused to build permanent shelter because they would spend all day looking for gold and silver because they wanted to get rich quick. The third issue that they had was that a lot of the people that actually went over to Jamestown, they were wealthier people or upper middle class. They weren't used to doing hard labor, so they simply refused to work because they just weren't accustomed to it. Life at Jamestown was very difficult, and it didn't get any better as the years went on. During the winter of 1609 to 1610, the settlers were literally starving to death. That winter is known as the starving time. It's a combination of the settlers being lazy because they were looking for gold and so they didn't prepare for the winter as they should have, but the Native Americans were also killing their animals and destroying their fields because they wanted the Europeans to leave. During this time, settlers were eating anything and everything they could possibly get their hands on, including dead bodies. So there are actual records of cannibalism for survival. Um, during this time, only 60 people actually survived. So the future of Jamestown after the winter of 1609 to 1610 is very uncertain. Enter the hero John Smith. Now the famous John Smith takes control of Jamestown when two-thirds of the colonists had already died of disease and hunger. So he decides he's going to save Jamestown by, by doing two things. He's actually going to bargain for food with the Native Americans, and he's also going to ask settlers to actually make permanent homes and to grow food and to, you know, harvest their crops. If they didn't actually work on growing their food, then they wouldn't receive any. So the settlers could no longer just dig for gold. They actually had to work at their own survival or else they wouldn't receive any food and they would just simply starve themselves to death because they refused to actually plant anything or grow anything or take care of any animals. Now I know that everyone thinks that Pocahontas and John Smith get married and you guys get that idea because of the Disney movie of Pocahontas, but that is not true. Pocahontas actually saves... John Smith's life um, when her father was actually going to kill him. So they become friends, but they do not get married. Pocahontas does marry an Englishman, but it's not John Smith. It's a man by the name of John Rolfe. And this marriage is unique because it actually helps bring peace between the colonists and the Native Americans in the Jamestown region. After Pocahontas marries John Rolfe, she actually becomes a Christian and she gets baptized and her name becomes Rebecca. She eventually travels to England with her husband John Rolfe and here is a painting of Pocahontas dressed up as an English woman um, that was done in England. In order to survive, Jamestown needed to do something, needed to grow something to make money. And Pocahontas' husband, John Rolfe, is actually the person that you could kind of give credit for saving Jamestown because he provides the colonists of Jamestown with a Spanish tobacco seed that he 
smuggled out of Jamaica actually. The tobacco seed that he had was for sweeter tobacco, um, tobacco that more people preferred to smoke rather than what was available. So the colonists of Virginia begin to plant and grow this tobacco at a crazy rate and they're selling it back to Europe making a ton of money and this is really what allows Jamestown to survive and to flourish as the first permanent um, successful English colony. Since Jamestown is now doing well, England wants more people moving there. So what they do is they offer individuals willing to move to Jamestown a head right. A head right is 50 acres of land given to each person that would pay their own way to Virginia. So if I wanted to go to Virginia and I had enough money to pay for my trip to Virginia, the Virginia company is going to give me 50 acres of land and on this 50 acres of land I could basically grow whatever I want to do whatever I wanted with it but what I really want to do is to grow tobacco because that was the big money maker they never found gold but tobacco became the gold of Jamestown and you can see over here an acre is about half of a uh, soccer field. So it's a huge piece of land that you could grow a ton of tobacco on and make a ton of money from. And here are a couple, couple of flyers that would be posted throughout England, throughout the UK, to kind of entice people to come over to Virginia and to attract um, new colonists and new settlers to come over to the New World. Not everyone who wanted to come to Jamestown could afford to pay their way in transportation costs. So what the Virginia company began to do to bring more people over to Jamestown was to hire indentured servants. Indentured servants are people that couldn't pay for their trip. So the Virginia company would pay for their transportation and in exchange, the people would pay back the Virginia company through work. So they would work for a period of years, usually four to seven, in exchange for the costs of transportation over to the new world. Indentured servants was a good way to have cheap labor because these servants would work on the tobacco fields and harvest the crop and so it was a lot cheaper to actually keep these people working than to pay people. Before indentured servants were used, the colonists tried to enslave the Native American population, but that didn't work out too well because the Native Americans knew the land, they could run away, um, and they could fight back because they were familiar with the territory, they knew where to hide, they had weapons, they were more established, they had families and friends. So enslaving the Native American population wasn't that great. And indentured, indentured servants would eventually leave because their contract was only for a certain number of years. So another source of labor had to be discovered, and that source was found in African slaves. Since Native Americans were not a good choice for slave labor and indentured servants eventually left, um, Africans were seen as the only choice and the best choice in terms of slave labor because they didn't have to pay for them and they were easily identifiable. When you had indentured servants, those were also Englishmen. So out on the street, you couldn't necessarily tell who was the master, for example, and who was the servant. When you had an African or a Native American and an Englishman, the distinction physically was very clear in terms of who was the servant and who was the master. The first African slaves arrive in Jamestown in the year 1619. When the first Africans arrive, yes, they were enslaved. However, the first few years, Africans were actually treated as indentured servants and some Africans that ended their contract they worked for that certain period of time eventually went to own their own African slaves themselves so there are examples in Jamestown of Africans owning other African slaves because their indentured servitude contract had ended eventually the Englishmen decide that Africans could not gain their freedom and they would remain slaves for the rest of their lives. And that was seen as easy, cheap labor, and that's really when slavery begins, begins to boom and expand in the 13 colonies. 
once Jamestown was settled and they were financially um, stable, they set up their own government. That government was known as the House of Burgesses. So basically, you would have a group of people that were voted in, and you would have the governor of the colony that would make the laws for that specific colony, and in this case, it was Virginia. The House of Burgesses, which started in 1619, is the first representative government in the English colonies. Now, even though you had a government, not every single person could vote. By 1670, only male property owners were allowed to vote. So if you were a male and you owned land, you could vote. By 1723, that vote had now been taken away from the free black property owners as well. So only white property owners after 1723 could actually vote on who would become a representative in the House of Burgesses. Now, I know that that was a long video. It was a ton of notes that you probably have, but please make sure that you read over these eight questions and you are able to answer these and you fully understand it. If not, go back, rewatch that section of the video, or write down the questions that you have so we could address them tomorrow in class. Don't forget about your blog as well. So good luck on wrapping everything up and I will see you tomorrow.